In this video, we are going to learn about Modbus protocol security. Modbus is an industrial protocol used for communication between intelligent devices and industries. We will go over the TriHackMe room titled, Attacking ICS Plant 1. This room goes over the absolute basics of attacking a plant that uses Modbus. Let us first understand what is Modbus and how does it work. Modbus is a serial communication protocol developed by Modicon in 1979 for use with its Programmable Logic Controllers, PLCs. In simple terms, it is a method used for transmitting information over serial lines between electronic devices. Modbus is an open protocol. It has become a standard communications protocol in industry and is now the most commonly available means of connecting industrial electronic devices. Modbus is used to exchange information between PLC, SCADA, and field devices such as sensors and actuators. Several versions of the Modbus protocol exist for the serial port and Ethernet, and the most common are Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, and Modbus Plus. Modbus communicates over several types of physical media, with serial RS-485 being the most popular method used. Let's say in a hotel we have several air conditioners. From a main computer, we can control each air conditioner. We give a unique address to each air conditioner. We can see here the two communication lines A and B, which are connected in parallel with each AC. One wire is used to transmit data, while the other is used to receive data. Modbus Gateway is used for data conversion between different types of Modbus devices and media. This is a typical setup in any industry. Modbus communication over serial RS-485 physical media using two-wire transmit and receive connections works on master-slave model. Modbus RTU network has one master and one or more slaves. Each slave has a unique 8-bit device address or unit number. Packets sent by the master include the address of the slave the message is intended for. The slave must respond only if its address is recognized and must respond within a certain time period, or the master will call it a no-response error. A slave is any peripheral device such as an I.O. transducer, valve, network drive, or other measuring types of devices which processes information and sends its response message to the master using Modbus. Masters can address individual slaves or initiate a broadcast message to all slaves. Slaves return a response to all message queries addressed to them individually, but do not respond to broadcast messages. Slaves do not initiate messages on their own and only respond to message queries transmitted from the master. Each exchange of data consists of a request from the master, followed by a response from the slave. Each data packet, whether request or response, begins with the device address or slave address, followed by function code, followed by parameters defining what is being asked for or provided. The general outline of each request and response is illustrated in the diagram. A slave's response consists of the fields confirming it received the request, the data to be returned, and an error check field. Modbus data is most often read and written as registers, which are 16-bit pieces of data. Most often, the register is either a signed or unsigned 16-bit integer. If a 32-bit integer or floating point is required, these values are actually read as a pair of registers. The most commonly used register is called a holding register, and these can be read or written. The other possible type is the input register, which is read only. The exceptions to registers being 16 bits are the coil and the discrete input, which are each one bit only. Coils can be read or written, while discrete inputs are read only. Coils are usually associated with relay outputs, whether a particular device includes all of these register types is up to the manufacturer. It is very common to find all I.O. mapped to holding registers only. The type of register being addressed by a Modbus request is determined by the function code. 
The most common codes include 3 for read holding registers. Function code 6 is used to write a single holding register. Function code 16 is used to write one or more holding registers. Some of the Modbus function codes are shown on the slide. Modbus slave devices can be visualized as having an internal spreadsheet filled with numbers. The columns in a Modbus device's spreadsheet represent register types. The rows in a Modbus device's spreadsheet are simply the register number. Most often, these start at 1 and count up sequentially. Some devices might not have a register 1, and their first register may be number 100, for example. Now, let us look at the TryHackMe room. The first task is Introduction to OT and ICS. You can read through it in your own time. The second task introduces the Modbus protocol, which we have already seen in detail. The task also introduces the Modbus TCP library, which we can utilize to play with Modbus. So, go ahead and install it with the given command. We also have some downloadable scripts here. The author has provided us these scripts to attack Modbus. So, download these. I already have downloaded these. The first two questions ask about the functions of Modbus library that are used in these scripts. The first question is, which is the function used to read holding registers in the Modbus library? Open the discover.py script. We can observe that it takes the IP address as the argument and connects to port 502. Here we have a function client dot read holding registers, which is being used to read values from registers. The second question is, which is the function used to write holding registers in the Modbus library? Now cat out the contents of set registry dot py. And here we have write register function. So answer the question. For task three, we have a virtual plant VM. Start your machine. Once it starts, browse to the target IP address in a web browser, and you can see a visual representation of a water bottle filling plant. Here, we can see that we can press the escape button to restart the plant. We have bottles that are being moved on a roller and being filled with a liquid. If you look closely, you can see a sensor at the bottom that indicates the start of a bottle. And we have a sensor that senses if the bottle has been filled and our nozzle stops the liquid. Let us restart the plant. Now, you can see as soon as the first sensor senses the bottle, the nozzle opens up. As soon as the bottle is filled, the liquid stops. So, we have three phases. The initialization phase once the plant starts from the beginning. The filling phase is when water flows in the bottle. And the moving phase. Once the bottle is filled, the roller starts again moving the next empty bottle under the nozzle. And we have sensors to read the state of the plant and actuators to alter the state of the plant. The first question is how many phases can we observe? So we have seen that the plant has three phases. The next question is how many sensors can we observe? We have seen the two sensors in the graphical representation. How many actuators can we observe? These are three, the plant start stop button, the nozzle and the roller. Now we have to use the given script to discover the registers. Run the discover.py script, and we can count 16 registers with values of either 0 or 1. The next question is, after the plan is started and a bottle is loaded, how many registers are continuously changing their values? Let us observe the change in register values. 
we can see that only the first four registers are changing values. Which is the minimum observed value? We have seen that the minimum value is zero. And for the next question, we have the maximum value as one. Which registry is holding its value? If we go back, we can see that the 16th register value is constantly one. Next question. Which registries are set to 1 while the nozzle is filling a bottle? Now, we have to pay attention and observe the GUI with our discovery script. If we look closely, we can see that registers 2 and 4 are 1 once the bottle is filling up. Which registries are set to 1 while the roller is moving the bottles? Observe the plan again, and we can see these are 1 and 3. Now the color of the water level sensor is red, and the color of the bottle sensor is green. Next, we have to find the registry associated with the roller. The register 3 turns 1 once the roller starts. Which is the registry associated with the water level sensor? Here we can observe that it is register number 1. So, now we have nearly mapped most of the functions of the plant to the register values. The start stop button is linked with registry 16. The roller engine is being managed by registry 3. The nozzle is either being controlled by registry 2 or 4. We need to perform additional tests to detect it. So, the next question is to find this registry. What we will do is change the registry values one by one for registry numbers 2 and 4 and try to observe the change. Back on our Kali machine, we have a set registry script. If we see its contents, we have to provide three inputs, the IP address, the registry number, and the value. Let us first set the value in registry 2 to 1 and see what happens. We can observe that the value has been updated but our plant has got stuck and the nozzle has not started spraying liquid. Similarly, now change the value in registry four. We can see that the nozzle sprayed some liquid outside the bottle as soon as it received the input. To confirm this, restart the plant and change the registry value again, and we have the same results. So, we can deduce that registry number 4 is associated with the nozzle. Now we have exactly figured out how registries work and how they are mapped. We can utilize this information to craft our further attacks. The room creator has already provided us with a number of scripts that we can utilize to attack the target. For example, we have a shutdown script. If you run this, you can completely shut down the virtual plant. Similarly, we have an attack underscore move script. This script causes the nozzle to spray liquid uncontrollably while the bottles keep on moving. Similarly, you can use these scripts and perform different types of attacks on the virtual plant. So, in this video, we discussed the basics of Modbus protocol and how easily it can be to exploit it and cause damage in an industrial environment. 